It's often confused with Veterans Day, but it's decades older and has a distinct purpose. Memorial Day, which is observed on the last Monday of May, dates back to the U.S. Civil War. It was the deadliest conflict in American history. And a tradition began when mourners would decorate the graves of fallen soldiers by laying flowers on them. That gave rise to the name Decoration Day, and for many years it was marked on May 30th. Following World War I, Americans were using this event as a time to remember those who'd fallen in other conflicts as well as the Civil War, and the name Memorial Day began to take hold. The federal holiday we observe on Monday took effect in 1971. It was moved from May 30th so government workers could have a three-day weekend at this time. And while it's also seen now as the unofficial start of summer, Memorial Day stands as a time to remember American troops who gave their lives in service to their country, whether in wartime or peacetime, and parades, services, and remembrance ceremonies honor their sacrifice. I'm Carl Azus for The World From A To Z, and Fridays are awesome! So happy you're with us today! Two international headlines keep things rolling for us. The first involves China and the island of Taiwan, which is about 100 miles southeast of the mainland. China's communist government wants full control of Taiwan. The island wants to keep its own democratic republic. And because Taiwan's new president recently said something that suggested Taiwan was separate from China, the communist nation launched extensive military drills near Taiwan Thursday as, quote, punishment of the island. Again, these are exercises, not attacks. The U.S. supports Taiwan's government and has sent weapons there in recent months. Second headline takes us to the troubled Caribbean nation of Haiti. We've reported on the surge of gang violence there as the government's gotten close to collapsing. Officials and military troops from the African nation of Kenya have controversially begun to intervene in Haiti with the mission to help restore order. The plan is mostly funded by the United States. The 2024 Atlantic Hurricane Outlook released by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Thursday is one for the record books. The forecast for named storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes is the highest NOAA has ever issued for the May Outlook. Between 17 and 25 storms are forecasted to form between June 1st and November 30th. Of those storms, 8 to 13 could become hurricanes four to seven of which could strengthen into major hurricanes category three or greater. There's an 85% chance of an above normal season. Sea surface temperatures are at record warm levels and experts expect current El Nino conditions to transition to La Nina, creating a dynamic strongly conducive to tropical cyclone activity and setting the stage for storms to rapidly intensify. Every category five storm that made landfall in, in the United States in the last hundred years Ready? It's a tropical storm or less three days prior. The big ones are fast. That lines up with the above average season predicted by researchers at Colorado State University. But keep in mind, these are forecasts, predictions based on current conditions. They're not always accurate and they can be revised as the season goes on. That season officially begins June 1st and runs through November 30th, though hurricanes can form at any time. on this date in world history. American inventor Samuel Morse did something amazing on May 24th in 1844. He transmitted a long distance message over a copper wire, a telegraph message, the first of its kind between the US Capitol and Baltimore, Maryland. The text of the message, what hath God wrought? Next, I don't remember how old I was when I realized you couldn't dig a hole to China, probably like 27. But work began on this date in 1970 to dig the deepest hole ever dug. It's called the Kola Superdeep Borehole. It was a project by the Soviet Union that eventually reached a depth of more than 7.6 miles. It got deeper than any other project of its kind, but it had to be abandoned before it reached its goal of 9.3 miles because of unexpected heat, unexpected drilling problems, and a lack of funding. The hole was sealed and it remains today in a remote part of northwestern Russia. In a province of Western Canada named Saskatchewan, we're excited to be part of the day at Humboldt Public School. Mrs. Moore's class, great to see you in the city of Humboldt. Let's go Panthers! 
On the U.S. West Coast, we come to the city of Van Nuys, California, where Mr. McCluskey's class is with us. Hello to the wolves of Van Nuys High School. And on the U.S. East Coast, please forgive me if I mispronounce your teacher's name here, Mrs. Theberge, Theberge, Theberge. However you say it, we are happy to see you at Baltimore Leadership School for Young Women in Baltimore, Maryland. Word it out. What's in a name is a popular quote from what Shakespearean play? Romeo and Juliet, all's well that ends well, much ado about nothing, as you like it. That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet, continues the quote from Juliet Capulet, namesake of Romeo and Juliet. Orlando Jonathan Blanchard Copeland Bloom. Might not quite roll off the tongue. How about Henry William Dogleash Cavill? There's James Kimberly Corden, Willard Carroll Smith II, Ryan Rodney Reynolds, and of course, Carl Sargasso Azus. Not really my middle name, but the others are real. And the reason for some of those dates back to a tradition that's far older than any of us. What's the purpose of a middle name? It's not just another title for parents to use when they need to let their kids know they mean business. There's an actual reason behind it, dating back to ancient Rome. In that period, Romans commonly had three names. A praenomen, meaning personal name, a nomen, family name, and cognomen, indicating which branch of family one was from. And the more names you had, the better. They respected people with many names. In the 1700s, the tradition popped up in Western cultures. Aristocrats gave their children long names to show their high status in society, while others, like Spanish and Arabic cultures, gave children paternal or maternal names from past generations to keep track of the family tree. But how we use middle names today is most like Europeans did during medieval times, when a child's middle name was often that of a saint. Many believe this saint would protect the child. This European tradition entered the United States in the 1800s with immigrants, but people started to leave the religious middle names behind in favor of more creative ones. It was common to use the mother's maiden name, for example. Middle names became official in the United States by the beginning of World War I in 1914. Official enlistment forms became the first government documents that requested applicants first, last, and middle name. So when you think of your full name, you'll know that name in the middle has a history and purpose. We've got merch, y'all. You can now buy the shirt off my back. Well, not this exact shirt, but a new one just like it, along with hoodies, tote bags, coffee mugs. The official World From A to Z store is now open at worldatoz.org slash store. It'll help spread the word about just how awesome Fridays are. worldatoz.org slash store. Last story today, can a pineapple be worth its weight in ruby? Well, it's red, it's expensive, and it's called Ruby Glow. That's how you have to say it, Ruby Glow. Not really, but the Del Monte Food Company says it's spent 16 years using traditional crossbreeding methods to come up with this red-hued fruit. Its cost is $400 per pineapple. We don't know if it's GMO, we do know it's GM over some people's budget, but even at that price, the Ruby Glow, which was available in very limited numbers, did sell out in the US. Those who aren't apricot up in the current hype might not be peachy keen on papaying grape amounts for a date with even a crowned plant. They'd call the whole caper bananas and quickly cranberry the idea. But others might ruby gloat over the melancholy whose eyes watermelon over rubies, saying fruit is my passion, I had to goji buy it, how about them apples? I'm Carl Azus, savoring some sweet fruit puns on the world from A to Z. We will be off the air next Monday for the Memorial Day holiday, but we hope to see you again Tuesday. Have an amazing weekend. You're the best part of what we do, and you mean the world to me.